I want us to look at something that um, very dangerous, Jesus Calling. Jesus Calling. Have you heard about this book? Written by Sarah Young. We're transitioning now to a, a topic entitled Divine Revelation Knowledge. How does God speak to us today? And of course, all of the prosperity preachers, Word of Faith, New Apostolic Reformation, they claim that God speaks to them all the time. And some people will, will recognize the error of that, and some people, but, but there's a softer version of this that flies in under a lot of people's radar, and Jesus' calling is flying under a lot of ladies' radars right now, and men too, but especially ladies. Why am I so worked up about this book? Sarah Young, this is, by the way, 2012, number two best-selling book of any genre, not just Christian, any genre, huge. What makes this so dangerous? Well, let me show you some excerpts from the introduction of her book. This is no normal devotional book. Sarah Young writes, During 1992, I began reading God Calling, a devotional book by two anonymous listeners. These women practice waiting quietly in God's presence, pencils and papers in hand, recording the messages they receive from Him. This was her inspiration, reading this book, God Calling, written by these two anonymous female mystics. They claim to tune in just to the right frequency. They tuned into God's frequency and God began speaking to them and they were writing down what He said. Does that sound familiar, what happened about 2,000 years ago with the apostles? Sarah Young says, I knew that God communicated with me through the Bible, but I yearned for more. You see, the Bible was just no longer enough. The Bible wasn't enough. In theory, theologically conservative, evangelical Christians, whatever that term means nowadays, but uh, in theory, we have won the battle over the inerrancy of God's Word. But where the battle is raging today is over the sufficiency of God's Word. And you know what? We're losing that battle big time. Sarah Young says, I decided to listen to God with pen in hand, writing down whatever I believed He was saying. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> so Sarah Young tuned in. She got to just the right frequency, and Jesus began calling Sarah Young and with pen in hand writing down what he said. Dear ones, if that is indeed what is happening, then Sarah Young is writing Scripture. She's writing Scripture. And when you read this devotional book, and it is light years ahead of any other devotional book on the market, I mean light years ahead, it's written in the first person for Jesus. I, Jesus will do these things. I am such and such. I know this. I writes in the first person for Jesus. And when you read it, it's a very warm, fuzzy, emotional, effeminate Jesus. Ladies are eaten up with it. There's a shocking lack of discernment in the church today. Shocking lack of discernment. Now, bear with me. Watch this video clip. Uh, a lot of supposed mainstream evangelicals today are claiming that God speaks to them. Watch this from Beth Moore. What God began to say to me about five years ago, and I'm telling you it sent me on such a trek with Him that my head is still whirling over it. He began to say to me, I'm going to tell you something right now, Beth. And boy, you write this one down, and you say it as often as I give you utterance to say it. My bride is paralyzed by unbelief. My bride is paralyzed by unbelief. Beth Moore also claims that God speaks to her. And even going so far as saying, now Beth, you write this down. Dear friends, that is profoundly dangerous. It's profoundly dangerous. All these people going around saying, God spoke to me. Let me tell you what he had to say. God spoke to me and told me to tell you that you need to do this. You need to do such and such. Pastor, God spoke to me and He told me our church needs to go this way. Is God speaking to people like that today? How does God speak to us? Well, through His Word, let's go to the text. Hebrews chapter 1, 1 and 2. <clears throat> 
Y'all are ahead of the curve here. <laughs> Hebrews 1, 1 and 2, God, after He spoke long ago to the fathers and the prophets in many portions and in many ways, in these last days has spoken to us in His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, through whom also He made the world. The writer of Hebrews says that in the old days, God spoke in many different ways. Indeed, He did. God spoke to Elijah through a storm and thunder. I mean, excuse me, to Moses through a storm and thunder up on the mountain. God spoke to Elijah through a, a still small voice, which, by the way, was not some inner impression, still a voice. In Numbers chapter 22, God even made a donkey talk. So God did indeed speak in many different portions and in many different ways. But in these last days, says the writer of Hebrews, God has spoken to us in His Son. Friends, Jesus is the final speaking of God. The final speaking of God. Everything that God has to say to us, He has said in His Son, Jesus Christ. And we have a perfect, inerrant, infallible, all-sufficient record of that in His Word. Jesus is the final speaking of God. Now, am I saying that God does not speak to us anymore? No, that's not at all what I'm saying. God does speak to us today, right here. This is how God speaks to us. Can God give us, you know, to hear people say, well, God gave me a burden for so-and-so. Can God do that? Sure He can. But as Dr. MacArthur said, a day or two ago, we're not aware of when that's happening, but can God do it? Sure. Can He bring people to our mind? Sure. Absolutely. Can He, uh, can he guide our steps? Absolutely. Yes, He does these things. Yes, He convicts the lost of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Yes, He guides us as believers. Believers are led by the Holy Spirit of God. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not under your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge Him. He will direct your paths. How does God do that? I don't have the foggiest idea. I just know He does. He spoke the universe into existence. I think He can direct our paths. So yes, we as Christians are led by God's Holy Spirit in His sovereign will. We are led by His Spirit. But what I am saying is this, when people say God spoke to me and said, quote, da-da-da-da-da, you've entered some very deep waters. If God is speaking that way today in a direct quotable sense outside of Scripture, then whatever God is saying should be just as authoritative as any verse in God's Word, should carry the same authority. Your friends, God cannot speak less authoritatively on one occasion than He does on another. If God is speaking, God is speaking. God cannot speak in the Bible and really, really, really mean it. But when He speaks to us today outside of the Bible, you know, in this supposed still small voice or whatever, He still means it, but He doesn't mean it as much as He meant it here. How does that work? If God is speaking, God is speaking. And if God is speaking today outside of Scripture, then what we've got is an open canon of Scripture. The Word of God is not sufficient. Open canon of Scripture. I don't know how you avoid it. There is no avoiding it. God's Word is not enough. That's where the battle is being fought today. Dear ones, if you want to hear God speak to you, there's one way I can guarantee you that you will hear God speak. Read your Bible. If you want to hear God speak to you audibly, read it out loud. <laughs> I promise you, I promise you, you'll hear Him speak. Well, how do I know God's will for my life?